This is the Shrimp Trawler Video Channel Stratomatic Baseball Excel Game of the Week. Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 1977-80 Fall League World Series between the Cincinnati Reds and Baltimore Orioles. This is Game 3, opened up in Riverfront in Cincinnati. Orioles won Game 1, 6-0. Reds won Game 2, 8-1. Not very competitive games, but we get a split, so we got a competitive series. Um, the pitching rotation the rest of the way. This is Game 3. The Reds will put Joe Price on the mound against Dennis Martinez. Game four, a repeat of the game one starters, Tom Seaver, Jim Palmer. Game five, first appearance from Mike Flanagan for the Orioles against Mario Soto in short rest. A day off. Game six, Dennis Martinez on short rest, back in riverfront if necessary, against Bob Alchenko, his first appearance. And then Palmer and Seaver for all the marbles if there's a game seven for the third time. Uh, let's get started from game three. Joe Price for... The Cincinnati Reds, Dennis Martinez for the Orioles. Basically, the Orioles are uh, using their left-handed pitching lineup for the first time in the series. The Reds have made minimal change to their lineup. Uh, getting an extra lefty Jack Rohammer in the game as Martinez is better against right-handers. So here we go. Joe Morgan to lead off for the Reds. 42. Off of Martinez is a sky to left field. Tom Hutton, 57, is a K. And George Foster, 54, bounces to third. The Sensei is a 2E13 at third base, and he makes the play. Bottom of one, Paul Blair, 410 off of Price, is center B. Mark Belanger batting second against lefties because he has walks on his card. 3 5, a walk on his card. He is on first base for Ken Singleton. 45 off of Joe Price. Homer, 1-7, to seven, double. And that is going to be a double to center field. Belanger does not have to run against Geronimo. That would be a bad move this early. Second and third. Batting fourth against lefties is Lee May making his first appearance of the series. Former Cincinnati Red. Lee May, 2-9, is left B question mark. Now that's a different outfielder to run on for Belanger. 16, 17, 18. Minus one arm for Foster makes it 1 to 17. And he scores. Run our second two outs for Eddie Murray. Pitcher X. Price of E26 pitcher. And he makes the play. We go to the second. Johnny Bench. 58 off Martinez. Sky's the center. Ken Griffey. 2-8. Rolls to second. Jerry Turner, 2-6 is a base hit. Dave Concepcion, 2-8 is a base hit into right field. Turner will not make the third out at third base. With two outs and two on, it's Cesar Geronimo. 2-9, let's take a look at Cesar Geronimo's car. He's having a nice postseason. We saw him play very well in the divisional series against the Phillies particularly. Uh, and he's holding up his end of the bargain of 266 hitter 1977. His career year was 76 when he hit 301. But he's still a very capable player here. And 2-9 is a single to left field. I forget what Concepcion. Is that a single dot dot? I forgot already. Shoot. No, it wasn't. So the bases are loaded with two outs. Because I did yeah, that's right. I didn't want to send Turner the third with uh, to make the final out. So 2-9 is a base hit to left field. Turner could run here and try and score though. It's 15, 16, 17. I guess Lowenstein arm will run. And he scores on a 7. So he had to run for it, and he got it. Now, Concepcion, if you're 14 or better, you run a third on the throw, and he does. So we have runners on the corners with two outs. Being held on, because Geronimo is a beast stealer, for Jack Brohammer. 3-6 is a walk. Brohammer effective as the number 9 hitter, getting on base. And here's a humongous at-bat. 
in a series that has started with the Orioles and Reds evening it up and Joe Morgan bases loaded two outs in the second inning here. The pitch to Joe Morgan. 2-11 misses the grand slam by run one roll. And we don't have the full momentum shift we thought we were going to get there. So it's just a 1-1 game. A lot of blather. For Doug Sensei coming up here. 39 is a fly to center. Rick Dempsey. One, me. Rick Dempsey. 1-6 is a walk. Lowenstein. 34 is a K. And with two outs, it's Rich Dower. 56. Second X. This is Morgan. And he makes the play. Okay, it is Tom Hutton in the third. Hutton, 2-9 is a base hit. George Foster, 54. Third X, DeSensei, a 2-E-13 at third base. Should be a twin killing. It is not! DeSensei boots a double play ground ball, and the Reds have something going on in third. We were talking in the last series about how great all this defense is for both teams. A lot of ones. A lot of gold gloves sprinkled throughout the lineups. But that was not a good play today. 2-1 for Johnny Bench. 1-7 Johnny Bench. Let's take a look at the card. He had two home runs in game two. 1-7 is gone. Instead of being a solo homer with two outs, it is a three-run bomb. And it's 4-1. to one, And the Reds still haven't gotten out in the four, third inning. Ken Griffey, 64. Center B. Jerry Turner, 56. Right. And Concepcion, 47, is a K. Bottom of the third. It is Blair, 65. Second C. Belanger, 64. Third X. Brohammer's a 3E13 at third base, and he makes the play. Same E rating as the Sensei, interesting. Kenny Singleton, 310. Against the lefty, is single, 1 to 6. Lines out on a 20. 4 1 Cincinnati. Momentum has finally swung to the Reds in the series. Geronimo, 2-9 again, a base hit again. Now, with a lead, wanting to have some fun, uh, the Reds, Brohammer is going to hit and run on the play. And he moves the runner up with a roll of a four. Runner at second, one out for Joe Morgan. 2-9, let's take a look at Joe Morgan's card. Homer, 1-2-11, double, and that is a two-base hit. The score of the run, and it's 5-1 Reds. The Orioles went to Cincinnati to open the series and spoil the parade, and the Reds are trying to match the opening game in Baltimore. Tom Hutton, 55, short X. Belanger's a 1-E14, 1-E14, makes the play. And with two outs, George Foster, 2-11, rolls the third. 5-1, Joe Price looked like it was rocky in the first, then he settled down. And he's had a good one-loss record this year. They've given him a lot of support. Lee May, 35 is a grand under the short. Ed Murray, 56. Second X, a 1E6 second baseman. Makes an error, my goodness. So, if you ever want to chase these results down, folks, the lowest percentage uh, gets an error. So an E6 second baseman just made an error. So I'm going to chase this result and see what percentage just came up randomly here to give Joe Morgan his first error in human history. Oh. 7%. Yeah, that'll do it. Most like, Even an E6 second baseman, that's going to be an error. E4 second baseman? Maybe not. Let's see, do we have an E4 second baseman? Yep, E6 second baseman right here. 5 out of 30. So, yeah, oh well. Anyway, a little sidebar that the uh, you can you can use in the spreadsheet. You can find out these percentages that get generated to give you these fielding and E-rating results. That is a rare error for Mr. Joe Morgan. An E4, and it'll be Douglas Sensei's. 1-4, center, and it'll be Rick Dempsey. Now, the Reds got their beginning because of an error, and the Orioles, you try and capitalize here. Rick Dempsey, 56, second X again. Off of, of Morgan again. This time, however, he makes the play. Don't even have to roll. It's the same setup as in this area here. So you just look at the changing result. 
As a matter of fact, if I were to say just recalculate this box and see how frequently we get errors, let's just try that right now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 7, 20, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Oh, there's one, 50. So Joe Morgan, if I didn't do that, would have handled the next 50 ground balls on the X rating if it were to be rolled flawlessly. There you go, folks. Little Excel stuff in your Excel video watching. 5-1 Reds. We, get, we move to the fifth. It's Johnny Bench. 1-5 is a K. Ken Griffey, 54, third X. Uh, the Sensei, 2E13. Let's try to make a play here, Doug. And he does. And with two outs, it's Jerry Turner. 1-8, Skies of Center Field. Bottom of the fifth. Let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. John Lowenstein. Leads it off. 54 lines of short. Rich Dower, 66, flies to center field. Paul Blair, 49, ball four. With two outs, it's Belanger. 65 off of Price is a roller to second. Joe freaking Price, a one run game through five innings in a World Series. When we were talking about these top pitchers, I'm sure we didn't have his name in mind, along with Palmer, Flanagan, McGregor, Martinez, Mario Soto, Tom Seaver, you get the idea. But Mr. Price is delivering. Into the sixth, we go with Dave Concepcion. 5'11, right X. This is going to be Singleton, a 3E5 in right field, makes the catch. Cesar Geronimo looking for his third hit. He gets a walk. Bro Brohammer will try a hit and run again. This time it's a single for Jack Dead Blowhammer. A base hit. Geronimo goes to third. Martinez, a starter, eight. This is not a good situation for the Orioles to be in. Up and hold in the sixth inning for Joe Morgan. Two! Wait! Saw the card earlier. Triple. One to five. Single dot dot. And we got a single dot dot. And the Reds. Again. Another non-competitive game in the World Series. The one team seems to run away and hide. We got runners with the corners. Keeping it up for Hutton. 67. Single one to six off Martinez is the line out. Probably his final two batters, Foster and Bench. Here's Foster, 64, is a liner to first. 6-1 Cincinnati. Not a lot of intrigue in these games thus far. Kenny Singleton, 39, is ball four. Lee May, 2-3. Let's take a look at Lee May inserted into the number four spot against left-handed pitcher Jim Joe Price. A two-run bomb against his former team, and the Orioles are trying to make a game out of this thing now. It's 6-3. to three. Price is a starter six, a batter away from breaking. Is he running out of gas? They're going to roll with him. Ed Murray, 68, lines of first. Douglas Sensei's. 2-6 to Sensei. Oh, let's take a look at his card. Was batting clean up for most of the year. Against lefties, they slid him into the sixth hole for Lee May. 2-6, triple, 1-2, double. He rolls the one and gets a triple. Interesting. And that, folks, will be the end of the Joe Price story today. As the needle is on E in the sixth inning for him. Five and a third innings. Leaves with a lead. And it's time to turn it over to a nice righty. You got Dempsey, Lowenstein, Dower, and Blair. Through the next four are right-handed. We're going to go Ron Davis. A nice little bullpen pickup they got from the New York Yankees. Ron Davis was 14-2 and two for the Yankees. But it was in 79 when they missed the playoffs. And here's his card. Ron Davis in the sixth against Rick Dempsey. The infield has to come up. The pitch to Dempsey. 4-10 off Davis is a pop to second base. And with two outs. Big run here. They'd like to cut the signal to John Lowenstein. Here's the pitch. 55 off the Davis card is a clean double to right field, and the Orioles have made it 6-4 to four and will bring the tying run of the plate in the presence of Rich Dower. Finally, an exciting game. Here's the pitch to Rich Dower. 47 off Davis is a strikeout. So, now that the Orioles have cut it to two, how long do you go with Dennis Martinez? 
Well, I think we're just going to save Tippy for a little bit. Plus, we're losing for the Orioles are. So I'll have Martinez go to bench, and then when the next five, five, four out of five guys are left-handed, we're going to go to the bullpen with Stoddard. So here's Martinez to Johnny Bench, the pitch. 38 is a clean single. That's enough. He is gone. He is gone after six innings. Susceptible to lefties, and it has really cost him today. You look at the Geronimo game, the two times Brohammer got on base, Morgan, Tom Hutton, guys like that getting on. So the Orioles will go with Tim Stoddard. Very good against lefties. Out of their bullpen. Here in the seventh, trying to keep this thing close. Got a runner at first and Johnny Bench. The batter's Ken Griffey. Here's the pitch to Ken Griffey. 2-8 is a 4-6-3 double play. Just what the Orioles needed. And with two outs, it's Jerry Turner. 1-4, sky to right field. And suddenly, uh, it's getting interesting in Baltimore. They're getting excited. It's a two-run game. Stretch time here in the bottom of the seventh in Baltimore. We've been listening to Crack the Skies live at the Warner Theater recording somewhere in the mid-70s. Warner Theater in Washington, D.C., I believe, performing Nuclear Apathy and all their big hits at the time. Crack the Sky played well frequently on the radio in Maryland during this time uh, line. So, bottom of the seventh, Ron Davis. With a two-run lead, we'll continue. It'll be Paul Blair for the Orioles. 1-3, grounds the second. Belanger, 1-9, grounds the third. And with two outs, it's Kenny Singleton. 5-10 off of Davis' is catcher's card. And Bench, of course, is a 1-3, I want to say here. Yeah, so 1-3. E Good luck with that. And the inning's over. So the Reds are six outs away. Davis has pitched an inning in two-thirds. He's a relief three. We go to the eighth. We have, my goodness, a righty then four straight lefties. My Stoddard is in there. Concepcion, 1-7 is a K. Geronimo, 63, second X. This is Dower, a two at second base, makes the play. And with two outs, it's Jack Brohammer. 33, pops to first. Now they might want to put Stoddard on ice to save him and not wear him out in a game they're losing. 6-4, to four, Ron Davis, the same thing. You might want to think, well, go hard righty here. And he just had a hard righty. You can go a soft. Actually, yeah, you got a bunch of righties coming up. Now you bring in a lefty Tomlin, you're playing right into the Orioles' hands in the next four batters. Uh, you keep going with Ron Davis, and he would not be available for game four. But here's the news, folks. In game four, Tom Seaver's pitching. You're not going to need Ron Davis. So Davis will continue into the eighth inning. Same with Tim Stoddard. He could continue, too, because Jim Palmer's pitching in game four. They would probably won't need him. So Ron Davis against Lime in the eighth against a right-hander. 68, skies the center field. Ed Murray, 34, rolls the first. And with two outs to Sensei, 5'11", bouncer to short. This is Concepcion, A1, but E25 is kind of high, but he makes the play. Ninth inning, Morgan, Hutton, Foster, and I think we'll go with Tippy Martinez in the ninth for an inning. Down two. Here's Tippy, the only lefty in the pen. The face, Joe Morgan, Hutton, and then Foster, bench. Joe Morgan, 59, is a K. Tom Hutton. 39 is the sky to center field. And with two outs, George Foster, 2-4, is a sky to center field. Minor defensive move is to bring in Steve Bry to play right field for the Reds as a two outfielder. Very nice. He does come in. And then we've had two and two-thirds innings out of Ron Davis. That's probably as far as we want to go with him. Very successful. You got uh, really Dempsey, Lowenstein, and Dower. I'm thinking the lefty Tomlin to start the inning would be fine. So here is Dave Tomlin in the ninth with a two-run lead. If things start to get hairy, they'll turn it over to their closer, Doug Bear. Dave Tomlin, not too scared of these bottom guys on the Orioles. 
Rick Dempsey will lead it off. The pitch, 67, is a K off Tomlin. Lowenstein, let's take a look at John Lowenstein's card. He actually batted just 5% against left-handed pitchers. But in a great bit of fortune, he happened to walk enough to get a lot of walks on his card so he can continue to play in a game like this. Because you, you just need a guy to get on. And if Lowenstein were to get on as a beast stealer, he would just go to second base without a throw. So, uh, looking for that, here is Lowenstein and the pitch. 38 misses it and strikes out. And now the Orioles' fortunes are in the lap of Rich Dower. As the Orioles have had nine in a row retired late in the game. Take a look at Rich Dower's card. He's had some big hits in, this, in the series and, and against the Angels as well. He's rolled 210 a few times against righties. Trying to get on base to keep this thing going. The pitch to Rich Dower. 45 off Tomlin is triple one to four double. That is a double. And the Orioles will send the tying run to the plate. And I think, I believe they are going to not take a chance with Tomlin against Blair. And they're going to turn it over to Doug Bear. The righty closer of the Reds is going to try and get the final out as he faces the Tyron Blair. But the Orioles have one more trick up their sleeve, which would be a better hitter than Blair, which is Carlos Lopez. And they will do that. He also can play center field. So the Orioles are taking a fighter's standing eight count here. Going to the best guy on the bench. Take a look at Carlos Lopez card. It's very good. Homer 1 to 14 on 5. And Bear has Homer 1 to 17 on 4. This move could clearly backfire for the Reds. Here we go. The tie run is Carlos Lopez with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Here's the pitch. 4-4! Four, four. He did it! Doug Bear, Homer 1 to 17, and it's gone! Carlos Lopez ties the game. That's a double off of Tomlin. Unbelievable. Horrific luck for the Reds. A 4-4 off of Bear. Cannot believe it. Homer won a 17 and it's gone. I guess we need to review Paul Blair's card. The card that was pinch hit for. Now we'll review it because he hits lefties a lot better than righties. And look at the home runs he has against lefties. So... That's why uh, Lopez was brought in, because they brought in a righty. So, Carlos Lopez has tied this game with two outs in the ninth inning. It is six to six. Lopez will just take over immediately in center field for Blair. And it'll be Mark Belanger. Belanger, 111, is a liner to third. Oh, boy. Now we have some deep, uh, bullpen issues and an extra inning game in game number three. The Reds have just Bear and Willoughby left. And now Tippy, you're going to start stretching him out into his second and third inning, predictably. Here is Tippy Martinez continuing into the 10th of a 6-6 sudden thriller in Baltimore. Johnny Bench, 68 off Martinez is a K. Ken Griffey. 56 is a K, and with two outs. Boy, the fans in Baltimore are going bananas here. It is Steve Bry, uh, the defensive replacement, brought in in the ninth inning. 66 off of Tippy Martinez, a single one to 16. He rolls a 16, gets the base hit. And now it is with two outs and a man on. It's Dave Concepcion. The pitch to Dave, 511, is a K. Martinez is a relief three. They might have him go a third inning if they do not score here. In the bottom of the 10th. And Doug Bear is a relief two. He most certainly will just pitch one more inning and will turn the thing over. Bob Alchinko has not pitched yet in the series. He is available. He doesn't pitch till game six. That is their secret weapon. If you want to call it that. But yes, availability is the best ability sometimes. So, bottom of the ninth, or bottom of the tenth, it'll be Doug Bear facing the meat of the Oriole lineup, Singleton May Murray. On the bench, they have Jim Mason and Echebaron. Not much stick there. So, they're going to have to win it with these guys. 
the Orioles. The pitch to Ken Singleton. 67 off Bears, a K. We could go two and a third with Bear. He's a starter to relief two. Lee May. 68, fly by the left. And with two outs, Eddie, eat, drink, MB Murray. Two, nine, single, one, a seven, and he does not get it. Now, thinking about bullpen, the Orioles have Mike Flanagan scheduled for game five. They could have Scott McGregor pitch game five instead and put use Flanagan in the bullpen if they want to keep the Reds facing a lefty, something they could consider. It's fun to have a World Series planned out and have it all go sideways in game three. Tippy Martinez, his third inning of relief, and I think it'll be his final one. Cesar Geronimo in the top of the 11th. 57 is a walk against a lefty. Now, Brohammer, almost certainly thinking either bunt or hit and run in this situation. Bunt's the safe way. Much safer than hitting and running. But, uh, yeah, how fast is Geronimo? Oh, Geronimo is a nice base runner. He will drop down a bunt. A4 is almost a bunt. It would, an a, a, a bunter, that's a base hit. Uh, B bunter, it is not. You need a two or a three. So it is a nice bunt, though. And you have Geronimo at second with one out. And now you got to be careful. you got Morgan, Hutton, and then Foster Bench. Tippy Martinez, I guess he's thinking he might as well pitch to Morgan, figuring that he would walk him anyway with first base open. As Morgan doesn't have a lot of hits on his card, he has tons of walks. So Joe Morgan will bat against Tippy with a runner on second and one out in the top of the 11th. The pitch to Joe Morgan. 1-11 is a roller to first B, and that gets the lead run to third base for Tom Hutton. Now, do you dare go to your bench for Tommy Helms or Steve Nicosia? As soon as you do that, the Orioles will go to a right-hander. And that would be, the right-hander would be Clay Carroll, and then you're screwed because he has no outs, no hits on his card. That's almost an automatic out. So, uh, Tippy will pitch to Hutton here. A bloop single gives the Reds the lead in the top of the 11th. The pitch to Tom Hutton. 39, he misses the walk by Whisker, and that is a sky to center field. We go to the bottom of the 11th. I'm going to put Tippy's innings there. He goes to the clubhouse. He did everything he can. They can try and walk it off for him. Doug Bear. Do we got, have him go a third inning? He's going to inning in a third. Oh, boy. And they got Alchinko and Willoughby, who are not that great. I think everybody's pushing their bullpen deeply. And, they're going to, and the Reds do the same thing. Yeah, Desensei, Dempsey, Lowenstein, Dower. Three of the next four guys are right-handed. Willoughby's better against lefties, says Alchenko. So Desensei leads off in the bottom of the 11th inning. 47 off Bear is a single. He's a 13 base runner. Rick Dempsey's not a good bunter. And he will hit away. 45 off of the Bear card. Triple one to two, single not that. And a three is rolled. Excuse me, a one is rolled. You see it right there. Triple one to two. Look at the bear card again. On four, five, triple one to two, single dot dot. Somehow, Geronimo and Griffey thought the other guy was going to cut it off and he rolls all the way to the wall and Doug DeSensei slides in with a late throw and oh my goodness, what a catastrophe for the Reds. The Orioles walk it off in 11, seven to six. Just as I was painting the Reds to come back and win this World Series disaster in Game 3. Oh my goodness. Bear blows it a couple times. A homer in the ninth, and then a single triple in the 11th. He goes two innings. Actually, he didn't get anybody out in the 11th, did he? He just goes inning and a third. He up the homer, and then he got the out in the ninth, and then three up and three down in the tenth, and then he didn't get anybody out in, the, in this disastrous eleventh. A bizarre triple on triple one to two off the bear card. That's incredibly bad luck for the Reds. Though, they would have been in a real pickle with first and third and nobody out after that. These are the types of games home teams tend to win. 
home field advantage and all that. Jeez, what a shocking World Series game that's just taken place. My goodness. Tippy Martinez gets the win. Three innings of relief. It's all here in these three frames. Tippy gave up a hit and a walk and one, two, three, four strikeouts. He was brilliant uh, against the Ohio players in the divisional round as well. He's having a big postseason. Tim Stoddard, two innings. He came in after this single and got everybody out with a strikeout. Then it's Martinez, pretty uneven start. Ten hits, gave up the six runs most early. The error there, well, that's a killer. Uh, so we'll cut him four earned runs. Two walks, three strikeouts. Doug Bear. The Goat Horns in Cincinnati. My goodness. Well, it's a good thing that Tom Seaver is a starter nine in game four because Bear might not pitch if it comes down to a late inning situation after this debacle. He gives up th uh, three hits, two runs, and a K in the loss. Dave Tomlin came one in the ninth, gave up the hit, the run, and two strikeouts, and can't believe they pulled him out of the game with one batter to go. That's a tough call. The odds said that Bear had it over Tomlin, and it didn't work out. Sometimes you go with the best call, and when it doesn't work out, you just throw your hands up. What are you going to do? Uh, Ron Davis, two and two-thirds. He was fine. He came in here, shut the Orioles down when they started a rally. He won't be available in the next start. A hit and a K. And Joe Price ran out of gas in the sixth inning with a no decision here. He gave just three hits, but four runs. The hit, a sack fly, and a one run and one run hit in that inning, and then in this inning, he gives up uh, three runs, only two hits. All four of those runs were earned. He walks four, strikes out one. Very, very troubling box score here. One double oh eleven oh one oh ten. Seven runs on eight hits, six runs on 11 hits for the Reds, three walks, eight strikeouts, four, five. The Reds put 14 men on base, Baltimore put 12 on base. But, oh my, what a finish for the Orioles here. That's it for game three. Hope you're enjoying the World Series. We'll be back with a game four.